everyone. I'm going to walk you through some of the calculations for the density lab. So you're going to have a bunch of different cubes, and the first thing you're going to do is kind of what, indicate what color they are, describe them a little bit, and then you're going to measure the length, the width, and the height of the cube. So they should be fairly even, but you do want to you want to measure um, each side just in case there's any irregularities. Um, so the one that I had was a tiny one. It was uh, one by one by one. Great. So now I can find the volume. The volume, to find that, I'm just going to do the length times the width times the height. So in this case, it's going to be 1.00 times 1.00 times 1 1.00 times 1.00. Great. That's my parentheses, which 1 times 1 times 1 is just going to be 1. <laughs> so 1. Zero, zero. And my units are centimeters cubed because it's centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. So that gives me centimeters cubed. One centimeter cubed is the same as one milliliter, just for, for reference there. So that's one. Um, you're also going to weigh the cube. So each cube will have a, a different mass. Uh, this one was 1.4 grams. And then to find the density, I'm just going to do mass over volume. So I'll have my 1.4 divide. That's my mass, right? That's my grams divided by 1.00 centimeters cubed. Just going, which just gives me 1.4, 1.40 grams per centimeter cubed. You don't have to put the units over here. Um, just they're already listed for you over here, so that's fine. All right, so that's my volume, and then you want to identify this. You know what you're going to use the the chart in the lab manual to help you figure out what cube you have there. So if you open up the lab manual, experiment two, scroll down to the bottom, and there is a a chart here that has some common materials. One of the, a couple of these are going to be what you have. Uh, so I just, you know, looked down here and tried to find which density is closest to the one that I found. So I had one that was 1.4, and there we go. It's exact. It's, so it's PVC. So I would assume that the uh, cube that I was dealing with, uh, the plastic cube there, was made of PVC. Um, and then, you know, will this float or sink in water? Well, the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So if the density of the cube is greater than that, then we would expect it to sink. So in this case, I would say this guy's probably going to sink. And then we're going to test that at the end. So I put my calculations in here. You can show them down here. That's fine. You can show the volume calculation and the density calculation. Um, there's volume. There's the space for density. And you can do that for all of the other ones as well. And you do the same same process. You'll, you're going to measure the length, the width, the height. Uh, that will give you the volume, and then mass over volume. We we'll give you the density, and then just identify the cube and indicate whether or not it's going to float or sink. Uh, for the irregular solid, it's a little bit different. Um, you're going to do this by volume displacement. So the irregular, there'll be a bunch of different irregular solids. So irregular just means it's not going to be a cube or a rectangle or um, a cylinder. It's going to be something else. So I had a bolt that I tried. Um, I, I read my initial water volume was six and then when I put it in water uh, it displaced the water uh, and the new volume was 7.6. So I can say that the volume of the solid is the difference in how much water it displaced. So I'm just going to do my 7.6 minus 6.0 and just take the difference between those volumes. I got 1.6 milliliters. So that, that is what I can assume the volume of my uh, my solid is going to be there, 1.6 milliliters. I guess milliliters should be over here as well. Uh, I, I took the mass of the solid, found the mass of the solid, I just put that on the balance. That's what I got in grams. So to find the density, I'm just going to do mass over volume again. So I'm going to take that mass, that 14.4, and divide it by the volume, 1.6. And when I worked that out, I got 8.9, 8.9 grams per milliliter. Um, so now I'll go back to the density table, and I'm looking for something around 8.9. Uh, so I can see, okay, there's 8.5, there's 8.96, and 11.29. So I would say probably closest to copper. So I'm going to say this guy is probably copper. According to my data, that guy's going to be copper. And 8.9 is heavier than, uh, it is, it has, is a bigger number than uh, 1.0 for, for water. So I would say this guy's probably going to sink again. That one will sink as well. So again, I showed the calculations up here. You can put them down here if you want to. Uh, and then there's some post-lab questions. Don't forget to do the post-lab questions. So you're going to kind of read through these um, when measuring, you know, the volume of an irregular solid by water displacement. Why don't you want to have any bubbles in there? What do you think? How do you think that will affect your results? Um, list your samples in order of increasing density. 
And then, and then this one always confuses people, but all we're doing now is looking at different liquids over here. So we have acetone, we've got glycerol, we've got mercury, and they all have different densities. So this is 0.79, this is 1.26, this is 13, this one's really dense. And then we have our plastic and our wood cube, our plastic, wood, metal, all of our solids that we tested. And we're gonna say, you know, with this plastic cube, according to the density of our plastic cube, would it sink or float in in these um, liquids so let's let's do the let's do it for this plastic cube that i have here um the density is 1.4 so for anything any liquid that is less than 1.4 uh this guy's gonna sink right so this one you would sink in there because 1.4 is bigger than 0.79 here's gonna be close looks like he's probably gonna sink uh, but for mercury he'll probably float so if the solid is more dense than the liquid yeah, the solid's more dense than the liquid, it's going to sink. If it's less dense, then it'll float. And that's how you kind of answer those post-lab questions there. Um, what are some sources of experimental error when you're when you're doing these exercises? So think about what kind of things could have gone wrong. Um, you know, when you're measuring by volume displacement, did did you accidentally splash some water out of the graduated cylinder? Because if you lose some water, then that's going to affect your, your water measurement. Um, when you're measuring with the with a ruler, um, you know, you're, anytime you're, you're, what, did you approximate wrong? Did you, maybe the you know, cube slide over on the ruler or something? There's, there's always some kind of error that could have gone, something that could have gone wrong. So I just want you to start thinking about what those sources of error could be. Uh, and you want to include them here, but also put them in your conclusions. So in the conclusion section. So you're going to write up a lab report for this as well. So that's your data sheet. The rest of it is looking at the abstract. So I want you to like type right here. You type in there in your abstract. You can type right over here in your intro, in your objectives, experimental conclusions. So in your conclusions, you want to identify your unknowns. So who, what are the unknowns? Well, uh, I found that the plastic cube was PVC. Uh, and then whatever you find for your wood cube and your metal cube. Um, and then also your regular solid. So tell me all those, what, what are those things made out of? That's, that's part of what you want to put in your conclusions. You also want to put that in your abstract. So in your abstract, it's kind of like a little bit of an introduction with a little bit of results. So you want to put those results in the abstract. Um, when it says identify your unknown, it's not just the unknown was the metal cube. No, the unknown is like, what is it made out of? What, what, what was it made out of? What were all these things made out of? What are those materials? So the whole point of this lab is to use density to identify um, the material that those cubes are made of and the, and the irregular solid as well. So if you have any questions on that, please just let me know. Um, I, I hope this helps with the calculation.